My grandfather came here, he worked the number four mine, which is just down the road here. And that mine opened in 1866, it closed in 1961. My grandfather had six boys, they all worked underground. My dad worked underground. My, gra my fa grandfather, I lost two uncles down underground, which roof came in on them. I lost my first cousin, fell underneath the rake box. I had a brother work the mine. I had four cousins work the mine. And we all worked at number four. And why did we work at number four? Because my grandparents came over here, they couldn't speak English. So what they do, this company would take all the poles that landed here, put them in number four mine, and then put an interpreter at the mine site till you learn how to speak English. And once you learn how to speak English, then you go to other mines after that in the section here. And Italians, yeah, there was a hundred families came over here around the same time. One A mine up in the Minion, Ukrainians, Czechoslovakians, number two mine, and people from England, Scotland, Wales, Germany, France, Belgium, Newfoundland. And this is what this little island is made up of immigrants who come over here at that time to work for that company over here and the hardship that they went through and the dangers that they went here. And this most dangerous occupation in the world. You're out there surfing a little over seven miles, eight miles in some of these mines, 2,700 feet below the floor of the ocean. You never know when something can happen, and I've seen it with my own eyes. On February the 22nd, in the early hours of the morning, my supervisor approached me and said, Eric, I need you on the top level. He took me off my job to go do somebody else's job who ran away from their work. I had to relay chuck blocks for a quarter of a mile. Heavy, heavy work. And I'd done that from four till six. And then when I went home, that's it. It's 11 o'clock at night to seven o'clock in the morning. By the time I get home at eight o'clock, you go to bed. Two o'clock, I couldn't even move in bed. My back was just, I was in the fetal position. Just couldn't move. Couldn't go to work that night. Next night is when the explosion happened. And this is when I got the call from my father on the mind telling me what happened. And he told me there was men killed, but he didn't know who it was or how many it was, but it's, I, I was in disbelief that my brother-in-law was killed. And I, well, I went to school with all these fellas. I played hockey with them, played baseball with them. So you can imagine the camaraderie just among this young group of, group of men. And the oldest one, I believe, might have been 43 or 44. But it happened in an instant, which is a blessing. I mean, dying is not a blessing, but the way they went, the, the initial ones that were killed went out in a blast. The rest of the ones, they, well, they suffered severe burns. Three survived, are still living today, and the rest died from their wounds later on. It was a terrible time for Glace Bay and for the miners. It's, you know, one big family, and everybody gets hurt by it. But we had to go back to work. Can you tell me about some of the um, experiences that you've had while you've well, been working here? I did, I had a few experiences. I was looking after the men at the deep in that. I'd open up, close it. My job was to go down and, and maintain a pump. This night, I opened the museum up for seven in the night. Everything was total darkness here. And I went out and opened it up, came down here, got my tool bag, went through that door. And when I went through, there was a snow drift through the window about 50, 60 feet down. And I seen foot tracks watch you down. And I said, Mother God, it's the coordinator, he told me he might be down there waiting for me. When I got down there, nobody there. And I walked all the way through the mine, looking for the tracks. And when I came back up, there were no tracks come back up. That man was still down, and I could hear the machine running down there. It stirred up, and when I get in there, the lights would all flash off and on, and the, it would stir up again. Stir up again, the machine, and that's compressed air, which run that cutting machine. Stirred it up again. People come in or Cape Breton haunts, and I've been with them. And uh, yes, we have a place down in the back room, it's called a cage, where all this memorabilia and the things that the miners wore the night they were killed. We have their helmets, which were burnt, charred, and other stuff that they wore. And that has been known as a real spooky place. So I went in there one night and they had this box, echo box, whatever you call, and they were asking a question and I asked twice, one of the most famous pictures you see in this museum is a man called Fabe Young. He's the one you see everywhere. And I called Fabe's name out twice. And they come back to me, Eric, Eric. Everybody in the room could hear it. And I didn't want to believe it, but I heard it. 
I actually thought there might be someone throwing their voice in there, but we went into another room and there was a couch that was donated by someone's family. And I asked, has anybody ever died on this Chesterfield couch? Yes. I said, what from? The voice came back, black lung. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely happened. So that's the nearest place that I don't like visiting there by myself. Actually, I won't go there by myself, no. I'm not a real believer in this stuff, but there's some things you can't account for. Another experience would happen to me, Mary Alice told me to open up, to, she said, the, the alarm is going off then, I, I only live up the road, will you go down? She was scared to go down. I came down, I put the alarm, I opened the door, when I went down, and the, the cage just down there with all the artifacts down there, men got killed in the pit, old hats and lamps and that, and I can hear people talking down there in the back, and I was the only one there, and I hollered down, anybody there, anybody there? Nobody answered. And then I started walking down towards them. When I got any of them, they stopped. And then when they come back again, they stare up again, start talking over again in the air. And that's something I, I witnessed in, down there. And even that, back then, the machine is stirred up and going all the time, fellas here. So this is my experience, because I had the dunes open the place here and closing it, and all alone, nobody else around here. See your hand? <coughs> so, Abby, what do you think that is? What do you think that is, those experiences, those voices? I, I, really, I really don't know, but experience has got to be ghosts or something. I don't know what it, what it is. They're here. They're here, let me tell you. Okay, so lights keep dying, so I'm gonna go old school again with this. Let's just see if anything wants to communicate with me. behind me. Moon. If there's anybody out here with me who wants to communicate, make a noise. Well, I heard something. Can you make that noise again? Okay. Oh my God. My flashlight's dying. My old school. Old school's not working. Um, thought I heard Did that light just go out. Seriously, this light ahead of me just went out. You can't see it because it's out, but literally just went out. Okay, well, the one ahead of it is on, so bear with me as we pass through darkness. Um, yeah, when I was over here earlier, I thought I heard footsteps and it occurred to me that it could have been the sound of something walking outside the house because there's cobbles here or bricks, I guess, kind of like cobbles, but it's what it sounded like was footsteps on cobbles. Okay, you guys saw that, right? 
another light just went out beside me. Oh my God, is there something following me? That would make sense if it was using energy around it to move. Theoretically, it could drain power from sources around it, like my flashlight or the lights around me. Hello? Is there somebody here with me? Are you turning off lights? Okay, let's keep going and see if that happens again. Let's have a look ahead of me. Yep, lights on. Look behind me. Lights off. It doesn't really make sense for lights to go off while you're next to them, if they're on motion sensors, which I wouldn't say that they are. That is a very large June bug. Gah! June bug attack. Nope. Go towards the light, not towards me. Go away. Pretty sure that's not paranormal. Okay, there have been no more lights going off. Getting to the last one here. Hello? I'm still really weirded out about those lights. How random is that? It's pretty random. That's the answer. It's really random. Okay, I'm going to have to check the footage on that one. But I thought I saw something behind me, like here. Hello? This is so cool. If there's anybody here with me right now, can you make that light behind me go off? Holy crap. Okay, the light at the end is out. Can you see that? Light, light out. Ah! Okay, these are either the weirdest lights on timers, or there is something seriously messed up going on out here. If there's somebody here with me right now, can you make a noise?
can you knock on something or oh my god I don't know why that would be coming on right now, but that was pretty weird. My name is Dylan Garland. I'm here with a group that are investigating this place to see if there's anybody on the other side of life that would like to talk to us. And we just want to learn the story of this place and just chat, maybe help you if you need help and if we can provide that help. And uh, hopefully we'll come to this, but if we have to get rid of anything that is bad here, that we don't want here. So I don't have any devices on me right now. I just have the audio recorder, which you absolutely can talk into if you'd like, but I would like something more if possible. I know you guys, worked a very heavy job and a very heavy life in mining. But I am gonna ask you for a little more. That if you in this room would like to talk to me or would like to show me that you are here, can you move something in this room? Can you make a noise? If you can, can you talk? Can you just let us know and let me specifically know that you're here. And we mean no disrespect. We just want to know if you're here. And if you are here and you're willing, we'd like to mark we'd like to learn more about your life and what it was like here and what these artifacts in this area represent for you. Somebody up there? I think I just heard the wood creak. I don't know if that got picked up on the audio, but there was a wood creek up there. And I know where everybody is right now and nobody's up there right now. Is anybody here? Are any miners still here with these artifacts, with anything? I will say this, if the thing that was at the St. Patrick's Church is still here, I'd prefer you not to tip all these shelves over. I know you tried to kill me before. I prefer you don't try that right now, please, thank you. So I just noticed something that I did not notice while we were doing this earlier. There are wooden legs here. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the audio recorder right here for a second. I'm actually gonna go get something because the room's different now. I don't say that often because half the time I genuinely don't just sort of subscribe to that feeling, but the room is different right now. So I'll be right back, I'm gonna go get something. While I'm gone, if you wanna talk into that, that recorder, you can. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I want you to go up there mm -hmm. and I'm gonna stay down here. Okay. And I'm gonna start asking questions. And feel free to touch around, look around. And if you do and it says something, tell me immediately. Okay. 
If I touch something and it says something? Yes. Okay. But I'm going to keep asking questions. I'm not going to watch you, so if it goes okay. off on its own. Is that okay that Chelsea goes up there? Okay. Are you still here? Yep. Sounds like a yes to me. That was a yes to me. Alright. We're gonna switch. You go down there, I'll stay up here. Okay, let's do it. Okay, I'm coming upstairs now next to the wooden legs. Set the audio recorder down here. Chelsea's down where I was. Where are you from? I, I think I heard something along the lines of a bullet. Where are you right now? Then you. Did it say near you? I heard near. I heard you. How can we help you tonight? We'll be here for two nights. How can we help you? Because sometimes, yes, we are a tad bit aggressive speaking to people on the other side. It kind of sounded like it's okay. A little bit, yeah. I got chills like nothing up here. Still with us? I understand this probably takes a lot of energy, so I'll start asking yes or no questions. Were you one of the men who died in the explosion in the mine? Yeah, I did. Holy shit! Holy what? shit! Thank you for answering that. I'm tearing up. Holy cow. I literally, like, goosebumps at me over here. Um, I'm gonna, hold on. Oh my god. Holy shit. I have the biggest chills. That was the most insane thing I've ever heard in my life.